Hi everyone, welcome to Understand the Bible with me, Phil Saker. This is the fourth part of the Firm Foundations course. Now, a long time ago, my maths teacher once asked our class, what is the biggest number that you could think of? And me being just new into high school at that time, I kind of panicked and I just said, um, a billion. And he said, well, that's stupid. What about two billion? And that's the thing, isn't it? You know, when it comes to numbers, you can just keep on counting. You never get to the end of the numbers that you can count. And that's why we have the concept of infinity, because it expresses something which is unmeasurable, something beyond anything that we can count or contain. Well, today we're going to think about how God is infinite. Now, that's a hard topic because, you know, by definition, it means it's something that we can't completely understand. But I hope that as we gaze into God's infinity, it will help us to understand just how big God is and will give us more confidence to put trust in him more and more every day. The famous medieval theologian Anselm of Canterbury once said of God, God is that than which nothing greater can be conceived. Nothing greater can be conceived. So he says God is the biggest or the greatest thing that it's possible to conceive, to, to think of. If you can conceive of something greater, then what you're thinking of is not God. Another way of putting it is to say that God is the most mostest. God is pure love, pure justice, pure being. Everything that has been created owes its existence to him. God doesn't answer to anyone else. He doesn't need to justify himself to anyone else. There is no source of authority apart from him. God is perfect in every way. It is impossible for him to improve in any way. And that has implications, as we will see, that will come on to you a bit later on in the course. But for now, let's home in on what it means for God to be infinite. This is what it says in the prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament. And this is one of my favourite passages from the Bible. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, or with the breadth of his hand marked off the heavens? Who has held the dust of the earth in a basket, or weighed the mountains on the scales, or the hills in a balance? Surely the nations are like a drop in a bucket. They are regarded as dust on the scales. He weighs the islands as though they were fine dust. According to the US Geological Survey, 97% of the Earth's water can be found in the ocean. And there are approximately 352 quintillion gallons of water on the planet. Now, I don't really know what a quintillion is, but I'm pretty sure that it's almost unimaginably big. So to think about 352 quintillion of these on the planet is even more unimaginably big. Now, there's just so much water that you can hardly imagine it. But this passage says that God can hold the entire ocean in the hollow of his hand. You know, to God, the oceans are just simply nothing. You know, he could just pick them up like you or I might pick up a, I don't know, a, um, a cup or something. God has marked off the heavens, all of the stars and planets, with the breadth of his hand. Now, he knows the weights of all the mountains and hills. They may seem like enormous mountains to us, but to God, they are as nothing. We human beings like to get big ideas about ourselves, don't we? You know, oh, look at what mankind has achieved. You know, we've sent a man to the moon. We've explored the ocean depths. But to God... All of the nations and all mankind's achievements are like a drop in a bucket or dust on the scales. We are like nothing compared to God. Even if you put all of us together, even if you include every human achievement, nothing compares to God. So why is it important for us to start thinking about God being infinite? The reason it's good for us to think about God being infinite is because it makes a difference to us. In the passage that we quoted earlier from Isaiah, if we read on, we find these words. 
Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, My way is hidden from the Lord, My cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, The creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, And his understanding no one can fathom. The reason it's good for us to consider God's infinity is because otherwise we can become discouraged. Isaiah says, Why do you complain and say, My way is hidden from the Lord? It's easy to complain when things go wrong in life, isn't it? No, it's easy to say, Where is God? Isn't he listening? Doesn't he care? Doesn't he see what's happening to me? And this is when we need to understand that God is infinite. God is the everlasting creator. He never gets tired. He never lacks strength. He never lacks understanding. He is infinite. If we feel that things have gone wrong, you know, if we haven't had the answer to prayer that we'd like or something like that, then we have to remember it's not because God has taken his eye off the ball. He's not taken a wrong turning somewhere. We human beings can get distracted or tired you know, we can simply be unable to carry out what we want to do. You know the expression, the best laid plans of mice and men. And that's, I think, a, a well-chosen expression. You know, our plans often have to change. You know, that's never the case with God. He is always on the ball. He always knows where he's going. If things seem to be going wrong for us, or if we seem not to get the answer to prayer that we wanted, or whatever it may be, then you can be absolutely sure of one thing. It's not because God has forgotten you or made some mistake. It's because he is infinite and he knows more than us. And this is also why it's important to worship God in spirit and in truth, as we were thinking about last week. God is infinite. He fills the universe You can't get away from him even if you wanted to. The way that we worship him is by obeying him and serving him as he wants us to every day, trusting in his infinite goodness and power. There's a lovely hymn which we sing in church sometimes and it's called In Heavenly Love Abiding. It's actually one of my favourites and I think it's a wonderful example of trusting in our infinite God. The hymn says that even when the storm is there around us, we will not fear because our infinite God is around us and that never changes. It's a pledge to put our trust in him in every circumstance in life. So that's why it's important for us to remember that God is infinite. So let's finish by thinking about some of the ways that God is infinite and what that means for us. So what we're going to do now is to briefly look at some of the different ways that God is infinite. But over the next few weeks, we're going to be coming back and looking at these in a bit more detail. So really, this is just to whet your appetite and get us something to think about. One thing that you soon realise when you start thinking about God is that everything affects everything else. So you can't talk about one thing without talking about another. So, for example, you can't talk about God being infinite without then talking about how he's infinite. You know, you can't talk about uh, God's wisdom without talking about his power. You can't talk about God's love without talking about his justice and so on. So we need to consider the whole picture. Let's embrace it by starting to think about how God is infinite. The first thing is that God is infinite in power. 
There's a joke which goes something like this. Mankind had become proud and said to God, God, we don't need you anymore. You know, we have all of the technology. We have the ability to do everything. Uh, we can even create a, a man from the dust. And God said, OK, well, then show me. And so the man goes down and, and reaches to pick up some dust of the ground. And God says to him, oh, no, 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 that's cheating. You go get your own dust. No, we human beings, we don't like to think of ourselves as limited. But the truth is we do have very limited power. One thing we can't do is create something from nothing. We may be able in a limited way to reshape materials, but we can't take nothing and put whatever we want there. Not only God can do that. And the universe does not simply run by clockwork. Everything happens by God's command. This is what it says in the book of Hebrews in the New Testament. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being sustaining all things by his powerful word. God's power is infinite. He has the power to create out of nothing. And everything that exists only continues to exist because he wills it to. And that should be a great comfort to us. God remains in control in every situation. And there is no situation so dark that God cannot bring out light. If God can bring light out of darkness, then he can bring light to our situations as well. This is what Paul says in 2 Corinthians. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. The same God whose power made the universe is at work in our lives today. That's a comforting thought, isn't it? It's an amazing, comforting thought. God is also infinite in wisdom. Now, wisdom is more than knowledge. Wisdom is knowing the best course of action in any situation. God's wisdom is perfect and infinite. As Paul puts it in Romans chapter 11, Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable his judgments! and his paths beyond tracing out. Who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counsellor? Paul says that no one has ever been God's counsellor. Now, his wisdom is so great that it's unsearchable. No one could ever give God advice as to what the right thing to do is. Now, we can't get to the bottom of God's wisdom. It's deeper and greater than we can even imagine. I think this is a challenge for us. There was a man called Alfonso the Great who reportedly once said, Had I been present at the creation, I would have given some useful hints for the better ordering of the universe. Now, I don't know whether he really did say this. It might be one of these legends. But the sentiment is one I think that we can all sympathise with and recognise. How many of us at some point have thought, God, you've done things the wrong way. You know, you've made a mistake here. This isn't right. You should have done it this way, my way, not that way. God is infinite in wisdom. He doesn't need our advice. You know, we need to learn to humble ourselves and trust in him. God is infinite when it comes to justice. We don't usually spend much time thinking about God's justice, but we instinctively recognise how important it is. Now, have you ever watched a film, for example, where the bad guy gets away with it, where someone does something wrong but doesn't get the punishment that they deserve. There are some films like that but they're not very common and that's because they're quite unsatisfying aren't they? Now, we as human beings we like to know that justice will be done. This is what it says in Psalm 76. From heaven you pronounced judgment and the land feared and was quiet. When you God rose up to judge to save all the afflicted of the land. Surely your wrath against mankind brings you praise, and the survivors of your wrath are restrained. The psalm says, your wrath against mankind brings you praise. In other words, no one gets away with it, and that's a good thing. Justice is done. 
Now, even we can recognise it's wrong when someone does something wrong and they just get away with it. There is no punishment. Now, the universe is crying out for justice and it's a good thing that God cares and God will punish those who do wrong. And Christians can trust that justice will be done because God cares more about justice than we do. In Exodus 34 verse 7, God says, uh, God does not leave the guilty unpunished. This is completely true. There will be punishment for every wrong. Either the punishment for our sins fell on Jesus Christ on the cross, or we will be punished by experiencing God's anger forever in hell. We take the punishment upon ourselves. It's either on Jesus or on us. There is no sin at the end of the day that will be left unpunished. The final thing we're going to think about is that God is infinite in love. God's love is infinite. And this is what it says in the prophet Jeremiah in the Old Testament. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. God's love is everlasting and it is unfailing. It's infinite. And that's good news for us. Now, we have a, a finite supply of love as human beings, don't we? You know, we quickly get to the end of our supply of love. And if we're honest, there isn't a huge amount of love in the world, especially right at the moment, is there? But God's love is different. His love never fails. His love never runs out. We can never exhaust his supply of love, we can never come to the end of it. And that's a good thing for us to dwell on as we finish. So let's take a moment to finish by thanking him and asking him to help us understand more of how great and infinite he is. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are greater than we can imagine. And we thank you that uh, even though through this time we've been thinking about how great you are, we know, Lord, that we will never, ever be able to come to fully understand how wonderful and amazing you are, that we will be discovering new things every day as we journey with you. And we pray that you would help us to grasp uh, more and more how great and infinite you are and what that means for us. Especially, Lord, we pray that you would help us to grasp how wide and high and long and deep is uh, the love that you have displayed in Christ Jesus. So we pray that you would transform us and help us to understand how big you are and what that means uh, for the way that we can trust you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining me today, everyone. My name is Phil Saker. This is Understand the Bible. If you're not subscribed already and you would like to get these videos uh, every week, you'd like to keep up with the course, then do please click the uh, the like and subscribe buttons. And if you click the bell as well, you'll get a, a notification email when I upload a new video. And if you'd like to get an email once a week with any new content on the website, uh, including these videos, then you can go on to the Understand the Bible mailing list on understandthebible.uk. And if you'd like to support Understand the Bible, then you can do that. There's a page down below and I'll put the link down and uh, you can um, give, you can pray. And I really appreciate all of that. So thanks so much for joining me. I hope to see you again for the next one very soon. But in the meantime, God bless.